Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and today we're in Windy, England here in London. And today what we have for you are the 10 things that might shock a tourist when they do come here to England. And the first thing that shocks tourists is the, the English, they really mind their P's and Q's. I mean, they are very polite. You will hear sorry, please, thank you so many times. You'll understand when people say, I hope my little boy grows up to be an English gentleman because they do have manners here. Now, not everybody has manners, but you will be surprised how much the politeness really comes in, whether you're talking to the police, or you're talking to the, the people that work in tourism, or just normal everyday people. The pleases, the sorries, to bump into people. Oh, sorry, sir, sorry, excuse me, sir. It does kind of shock people with how polite they are. And with those P's and Q's, so P's the politeness, and Q is the Q's here, okay? You'll be shocked with how people really stand in line very well here, and nobody Q jumps or line jumps or butts in line, because that is totally not a cool thing to do here in England. So that's the first thing that shocks people, how they mind their P's and their Q's, okay? Now the second thing that kind of shocks tourists when they come here is, you might actually like the food. I know, I know, it's like I'm being sacrilegious here, saying you might like English food, but hear me out. They actually have some pretty good stuff when you are here, and it sounds silly, but you'll be surprised how many like the foods you do have here, you might really like when you sit down and have that English breakfast with eggs and beans and toast and sausages, you know, bangers and stuff like that. It is such a good thing. Or when you go to the pubs and you go have a, a pub grub there, you know, have the Sunday roast or, or oh, or have a good beef burger or, or oh, steak and kidney pie. There is actually a lot of good foods that are here. Fish and chips is an experience you should have. The chocolates, oh, Cadbury, come on. You, you can't compare American chocolate to, to British chocolate, English chocolate. It's two different worlds and that kind of shocks people. Well, they go, you know what? I actually had some food I liked here. I know, it, it sounds crazy. That's why it's the second thing that'll shock you. The third thing that'll shock you about England is how much the weather does actually kind of suck sometimes. No, it's not raining every day. Obviously, I'm here in beautiful, sunny London. I mean, who says that? Beautiful, sunny London? Yes, they do have sun here, and you do get to go outside when it's not pouring rain but a lot of times it does rain here. I've been here where it's raining like horizontally and getting soaking wet and all kinds of stuff. So when you do come, just be prepared because you know what, you might get a great day like this or you might just get rain for the entire time you're here. So make sure you bring a rain jacket when you come to be prepared for the weather. And if you don't want to bring something, there's people selling umbrellas when, you, when it is a rainstorm, so you'll be okay. But just know, usually the weather kind of sucks sometimes. Not all the time though. Now the fourth thing that shocks tourists when they come here is how much the pub is kind of a focal point of a, of a lot of people's lives here. I mean, if you go to small towns, the pub is like the center where things go on, where you, you watch the football match and you have your Sunday roast and you go get a pint and talk about work and life and the family and how much the pub really is a part, a quintessential part of an English experience. So make sure you do go there and have maybe some of those foods you like or have an ale that the guy literally is cranking out for you and it really is a part part of everyday life here in England. And that's what's cool. It's like, you know, you think about the US, oh, I'm going to the bar or I'm going to a bar, but here I'm going to the pub and it, it means something more. And that shocks tourists when they think, oh, it's just a bar. No, pub is so much more than that. So you can have your Sunday roast with the family or, or a pint with your pals and things like that. And the pub crawls and all these things that can go with it. It is really cool and it shocks people how important pubs really are to English culture. Now the fifth thing that'll shock you about England, which is kind of weird that I'm doing it here in London, is England is not just London. I know so many people that come to London and they say, oh, I've seen England, or they say, I've seen Europe. Look, England and Europe, in that matter, is way more than London. London is an international city with all kinds of amazing things to do and see, but the country itself has tons of other things out there. The natural beauty and the things to see and the history is fantastic, so you'll be shocked that there's more to England than London. So get out there. And that's why it leads into the sixth thing that's gonna shock you. When you come to England and you get outside of the, out, out of the countryside, this country is actually beautiful. Go through Kent and the gardens of Kent or, or, or go to the Peak District or the Lake District. Go up to Yorkshire and see York. I mean, this country is gorgeous and you wanna go out there and go explore it. And that's what's really cool is look, it's not just London. And when you get outside of London, the countryside and the towns and the villages really are beautiful things to see. So exploring that countryside leads us into the seventh thing that's gonna shock you when you do come to England, and that is when you rent a car and your first roundabout. 
I'm not gonna lie to you, the first time I took a roundabout, I'm like, oh my god, I'm on, first off, they drive on the left side of the road, okay? So make sure when you cross the street, you look right, otherwise, you're gonna get smashed, okay? But the thing is, when you get that first roundabout, there's like two lanes and two lanes, you're like, okay, I've gotta go right, so I gotta go around the roundabout, and then come off this way, and you're like, oh my god! And once you do that first roundabout, and you're like, okay, what do I turn in, what do I turn about, all these things, it will shock you into a heart attack, okay? And then, after you do that, you'll realize when you watch European Vacation, National Lampoon's European Vacation, and you see Chevy Chase going around the Griswolds, going around the circle. Look, kids, Big Ben, Parliament. Look, kids, Ben, Big Parliament. For like six hours, you start to understand because seriously, renting a car and driving on the other side of the road is shocking in of itself. But when you get that first roundabout, you're like, oh God, I'm gonna die, okay? Now the eighth thing that's gonna shock you is when you do travel around, you actually can see Down Abbey type houses, the stately homes, the stately manor houses and the country homes and stuff like that. You can go visit those and it's cool because a lot of people, oh, it's just a, it's a set piece or it's CGI or something like that. No, these are real homes that you can go to. You know, you can go to the Cotswold and see the houses there. You can go around and see these stately homes, take tours of them, go to the gardens, have lunch there, have a picnic there. There, see all these things and it's cool because you get shocking like wow you can't see that old Downton Abbey kind of things here that old England it's not just in the textbooks anymore it is out there in the country and that's one of the best things the National Trust they have all kinds of homes you can go stay at I mean you can stay at them literally well, I guess one thing I'd say with that Downton Abbey kind of thing is you can have some of those true Englishisms here staying at an old house an old you know stately manor or you know or what you do with the National Trust they have all these homes you can stay in a home that's a thousand years old and enjoy that there and that's what's so cool is you can get the history of England in these homes and to get that kind of Downton Abbey feel I know that this show's been off the air for a while now but it does have one of those things that shocks tourists it's that wow I really get to enjoy those kind of things now I will say you get to see the Downton Abbey homes and stuff like that the Downton Abbey acting and stuff like that yes people still have good manners here but it's not like Downton Abbey anymore I'll tell you what just go to a go to the pub on Friday night or Saturday during the the soccer uh, football match you'll understand what I mean now the ninth thing that's going to shock you when you come here to England is the cops don't have guns. You know, in the U.S., they've always got a gun on the side no matter what. Here, most of the cops, the Bobbies, they don't carry guns, okay? And the thing is, the cops here are super friendly as well. So it's kind of like they're there for security, but it's almost like they're also there for tourist help. I mean, it's pretty funny because I know there's been many times when I'm like, okay, where, do, which way do I need to go to Notting Hill or, or I'm in York? Hey, where, how do I get to the... To, to the church and stuff like that or where's the best place to go have tea and crumpets and the, and the police officers male or female they're like oh go down there three blocks to the left you're gonna see this thing and they're super great but it does shock people when they see the cops but they don't have any guns now there are some cops with guns yes but it is kind of a shocking thing if you're coming from the US or South America and stuff like that to be like hey it's a cop and he's got a walkie-talkie huh interesting but it is cool and they are super friendly, which is super nice. And the 10th thing that shocks tourists when they're here is when they realize that Britain and England are not the same thing. England is a part of Britain, okay? It's called the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So obviously Northern Ireland's separate, Great Britain, that's England and Scotland and Wales. And that's the thing is, if you meet a Scotsman or a Welshman and you say, oh, you're English, they're gonna be insulted. Because no, England is a different country, but they'll be okay if you say they're British because there are a lot of differences between going to England and going to Wales and going to Scotland, whether it's the accent or even a different language they may speak there, the food and things like that. I mean, the pub culture pretty much stays in all those places, but there really is a difference. And just remember, you'll be shocked that England is not Britain, okay? It's two different ideas. Anyway, those are just 10 things that might shock you if you're coming to England on tourism or travel or vacation or fun. What are some of the things that shocked you about coming to England? Please put it in the comment section below so we can have more shocks. And if you want to see more videos like this, 10 things that'll shock you about London, five things you love and hate about visiting England, all kinds of stuff like that, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and we really appreciate your likes, subscriptions, and we hope you have a great time here in England. And I won't be shocked if you don't not have a not good time because it is a fun place. So get out and explore, stay in the B&Bs, enjoy the people, and mind your manners. Bye from London. So did you like that video? If you want to see more videos like that, click over here. If you want to see our latest video, click over there. 
if you'd like to subscribe, you'll see a little button somewhere on here that will like have the Walters World logo. Just click on that, and you'll subscribe. I'll wait because it's like 20 seconds of sitting here.